Hello and welcome to the shop. I'm Jared and this is the Questionable Garage. Sitting next to me, you've seen it in the background of the last couple episodes, I finally have all the parts. This is the Car Wizard's 1978 Ferrari 308 GTB. Now, David, the car wizard, picked this up from Tavares, where he had used it during the filming of the Car Trek Ferrari special, where Ed and Tyler drove their cars for over a thousand miles, and I trailered Freddy's Ferrari for 980 miles. He hardly drove it. For good reason. Uh, he didn't spend any time getting it ready, and I had three days and none of the parts I needed to get the carburetors happy. But none of that matters, because it is now fuel injected. David and Daniel Son, one of his mechanics, spent a lot of time getting this thing kind of perfected. They've got that cannonball interior pulled out of it with a nice, correct interior for it. They have purchased their Hawaiian shirts to be Magnum PI and then installed a new fuel injection system to replace those carburetors to get modern drivability and reliability. But the problem is, as soon as they installed it, the company that manufactures the parts went out of business and it doesn't make sense. Now for computer programmers, or just a good analogy is, imagine just pretty much everything under the sun uses a particular language, coding language, communication language, or basic just numbers for how an engine should run, and then you have the, the computer that's in it that uses something that really doesn't make much sense. Now I have been tinkering with fuel injection all the way back to the incredibly early MoTeC days where it's a 2D DOS table. You go around, you have bar graphs, not the ma magical, really nice 3D graphs we have today. And I, just, I couldn't make sense of it. I know there's gonna be tuners out there, probably a lot of you in Australia where the Tech 3's from, who understand its language. The problem is just no one near David, no one near me, we don't speak it. So we are going to be pulling all of those brand new parts out and installing, in my opinion, one of the best, most user accessible fuel injection computers on the market. Holly EFI, Holly Performance, they have been a fantastic channel partner. And when I started talking with them about this idea, one, they admit, yes, this is not a supported application, but they also supported the idea and my argument that as long as you give the computer the correct signals of crank position and cam timing, it doesn't matter what the engine is. So rather than just kind of being delegated to LSs and Coyotes and the modern Gen 3 stuff, if you run the correct cam and crank signals, you can run anything on a Holly computer. So I'm incredibly excited about that. But that's enough talking about the parts. Let me come pick you guys up and we're gonna go over to the table and take a look at them. And then, you know, we have a Ferrari in the shop. Let's do some gratuitous beauty shots of the Ferrari and uh, we'll be getting to work. Sorry guys, you caught me during lunch. Factor 75 is an important tool that I keep in my shop. Been working really hard at losing weight. You guys are commenting and noticing it and balanced meals is a big factor of it. What I love about Factor 75 is they send you pre-packaged, well-portioned and delicious meals. And when it's time for you to uh, take that two seconds that you have to eat your lunch while you're working, you throw it in the microwave two minutes, put it on a plate or just eat it from the bowl and you are good to go. Whether you're looking for keto-friendly, vegetarian, just th they have tons of options. Jump on the website. If you order using code QUESTIONABLE50, you get 50% off your first order. And they have tons of add-ins. Like I love these in-between meal shakes. They have lots of hydration and they just keep you full to get you through the day. Links down below, QUESTIONABLE50 when you check out, say 50% off your first order. I'm gonna finish this before it's cold. All right, let's go over to the table of Holly goodness where, uh, We've got all of the things that I'm really excited to uh, install on our 78 GTB to make it modern. So first off, I don't have all the ignition coils. We have just the four here. We are going to be installing LS remote mount style coils. This is gonna have way more spark energy than we need, you know, 
more is better, right? We've got one of our awesome MSD solid state relays. I love these things, they're incredibly robust, work really good, and of course we've got our complement of sensors, coolant, intake, air. We are running both in fuel pressure and engine oil pressure sensor. What that's gonna let us do is set up a fail safe that if for whatever reason it drops fuel pressure or drops oil pressure, we can cut the engine off and protect it because you know a blown up Ferrari engine, even on an old 308 GTB, is not a good day. We have got just a big box of different wiring harnesses, a universal harness, as well as specific injector harnesses and ignition harnesses that we will be modifying slightly. Now, Holly says don't ever modify their wiring harnesses. And when you're using the correct application stuff, you really should just run them as they provide them. But, you know, disclaimer, I'm a professional idiot and I'm gonna do what I want. And it's, I know what I am doing but I don't want to necessarily say, hey, you guys do it too. If you understand wiring electronics and why something is a certain way, maybe you can modify it. But otherwise, follow Holly's instructions, drop them in as they go, so that way you can get just that insane plug and play reliability. But we don't have an application for a 308 GTB yet. Maybe this will be a new thing, right? All right, so along next to the pressure sensor, we have a cam angle sensor. Now, when you're running fuel injection, you have multiple ways of doing it. Really, it comes down to the simplest being batch fire or sequential fire. And when it's batch fire, what is happening is you only can tell the computer where the crank is. You don't have a way to confirm and measure what the camshaft's doing. So every time your engine rotates over, especially in the V8 applications, but you'll see it in the V6, any even fire engine, there's gonna be two pistons coming up at the same time. So when you're running only batch fire, only a crank trigger, your injectors fire for half the time, but they do it every time that piston's up. So they will actually be spraying fuel against the closed valve because it doesn't know when that valve is opening. Wanting to bring this car into the modern era, we are gonna you know, build a custom mount. I'm starting with their big block cam trigger mount assembly and I'm gonna modify it. I don't know if we're gonna go off the cam gear or something else I was actually thinking is that's an old air pump drive. Might put a collar on that and put my magnet in there to trigger it. All that matters is whenever cylinder one is top dead center, ready to fire, that's when the that triggers. So we can use even though that has nothing to do with cylinder one, we can use that as our positioning homing signal as long as we time everything. So that's gonna be a little bit of figuring that we'll need to do. And along with the super modernization, we're installing two wide bands, one on each bank. So that way the computer is gonna be getting active feedback information and sometimes you'll have half an engine running a little leaner or richer. So we will be able to have the computer monitor that and say, hey, you know what? are even cylinders for whatever reason, they're running with a little bit too much fuel and we can set up actual corrections and pull a little bit of fuel just on the even banks. And then our final piece de la resistance. I think, I think that's what you're supposed to say. I either sounded really fancy or really stupid. The biggest, most exciting piece of the puzzle is our Holly HP ECU. So you have seen me run the Terminator on Johnny. You have seen the Dominator light white red on our drag car. And this is something that kind of fits in the middle. This is an aluminum case ECU, whereas the Terminator is generally plastic and it is fully potted. This thing is designed to be in a difficult environments, potentially exposed to you know, moisture. You want to always insulate and take the best care of the ECU that you can. It runs on the Dominator style software, so there's a lot more capability. What's also great with Holly is when you're trying to figure out what you need, they have tech lines, they have really smart salespeople that you can reach out. Let them know your goals, your power levels, and your setup, and what you may end up doing in the future with the car, and they can really help you pinpoint down and get the best computer option for your ride, for your swap, for your race car. I'm super amped that they agreed to uh, send me this stuff so I can do something really crazy. And I believe, we'll say it right here, this is gonna be the world first Ferrari on Holly, uh, Holly FI that I could tell. Disclaimer, based on 
15 minutes of Google research. So tucked in the back here is that Tech 3 computer that Daniel San got installed and got the wiring done up pretty, pretty well. This is a long cable just for the tuning side, I believe probably a wideband controller. We'll be pulling that, we'll be pulling, I believe this whole harness through here comes out. And again, did a real nice job through here coming in. That is, I don't know, that's something Ferrari there. We're mostly just disconnecting all the wiring and building some sensor mounts. And uh, that'll be the bulk of it. The fuel pressure regulator working great. We will swap out that mechanical gauge for the computer's electronic gauge. And then if we come around here, we'll be able to see it better once it's in the air. But this is the cam or crank sensor wiring going down to a custom trigger wheel that is set up as, if I remember, it's a 60 minus two. And what that means, 60 minus two, is roughly every 10 degrees, well not roughly, pretty much precisely, every 10 degrees of that crank pulley is a tooth, except for minus two. That is the, the homing sensor area where they actually have it solid for that 20 degrees of rotation. So there's actually a 58 teeth on the trigger. So the computer is gonna see the signal coming from the trigger. That's when the computer knows it is basically home. We need to give it a second home signal when it's at top dead center um, on the camshaft as well. So that way it's able to fire injectors and ignition independently, which is gonna revolutionize this whole setup. That's what we got to work with. We'll discover a little bit of wiring, I'm sure, as we're coming apart. So we're getting ready to do some real advanced stuff. But before any of that happens, it's time to tear it all down. Well, all right, let's get you caught up on everything that's been happening on our Ferrari. Now, first, I do need to address something. Some of you have probably been yelling at the screen and have already commented when I made reference at the very beginning about our cam sensor being on bank two. I was wrong. I remembered incorrectly and I found the diagram as I was getting ready to start wiring the injectors and our ignition system. This is our bank one. Ferrari does number them very weird. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't know why they do that. It's also got a very weird firing order that will go over when it is time, but we now have an injector harness built. I am very pleased with how this came out using the wire care product. And we've got a beautiful injector harness built out. We have our ignition harness built out. We've got the coils. Now, if some of you are asking, why did I not mount those for there. There's nowhere really good against the bulkhead that I could have built a mounting bracket. There's a lot of dead air in that area as well, which is going to make the coils run hot, which is not good for them. So they all live in the back and we've got our wires made and run. And yes, those are zip ties as my wire separators. It's hard to beat the zip tie separators. You do one loop and one in between each one and they work great and it's 100% custom. You put them exactly where you want it so you can get the wires to run precisely how you want. The next big thing is wiring up our crank sensor. 
we need to run the sensor wires out into where they live and finish up our mount here for the cam sensor. This camshaft is precisely 18 millimeters, so I was able to get an 18 millimeter collar, which is gonna allow me to mount the magnet trigger to it. I am now just trying to decide how we wanna mount the cam sensor. Still going off the original idea of potentially mounting this here. Building a standoff that will go to those bolts and then boom. The problem is I'm already almost fully maxed out in our adjustment, which is gonna create some problems if we need to get this any lower. I could possibly build off this ear and bolt it down so we don't have to do anything too crazy. Or I may not use this initial piece at all and build something completely custom. And once we get that mounted, then it's just wires. And then it's tuning. But uh, what's gonna be really cool and I am really, really excited is we're gonna go on the software, we're going to use the wizard and tell it this engine has this displacement, it has a fairly radical camshaft, here's the firing order, and I am like 99.87% sure the map it gives us, the car will fire up and run on. So, but before I can do that, I gotta get this cam sensor built, that mount built, so let's get started on that. All right, I think we have finally found the solution that we want for our cam position sensor, flying magnet, and where we're gonna mount it. Now we had been playing on the back side of the engine looking at different collars. I got a couple in, spent a lot of money on collars, and they're not doing what I want them to do. So I decided to go back to plan A, or I guess whatever comes before A. There's not a letter there. But I was wanting to do something on the aluminum cam cover. We've got it pulled off right now, and there is sufficient area on the face of the cam gear to drill and tap it for this little guy. Come on, camera, there we go. So that is a magnet embedded in the middle of this bolt, and whenever that passes by our cam sensor here, that sends our signal to the computer to let it know where home is. Now, its positioning is fairly important, as is your crankshaft position sensor positioning. I have it off right now, but come on, we can focus in that hole. You can see these raised teeth here. This is what we talked about earlier, the 58 minus two trigger wheel. So there are teeth every 10 degrees. And our cam position home is very important. Holly actually has a really nice simple chart here to help calculate everything. There's a lot of math, but real simple. We have eight cylinders, so we wanna be approximately 195 degrees before top dead center. Now that works great with modern aftermarket crankshafts and crank pulleys that have marks everywhere on it. Unfortunately, we don't have that but what we do have now is that trigger wheel. We know each tooth is 10 degrees and we have a fairly large range up to 30 degrees plus or minus 195. So we need to rotate our engine back roughly 19.5 teeth because that will be 195 degrees. Before top dead center, we will mark, drill and tap our bolt and then from there, I'm going to get a transfer bolt. I need to pick one up and I'll show you. It's really cool. You thread it in and it has a sharp point. We then will bolt the timing cover on, mark on the timing cover where we need to drill for the sensor, drill and tap for the sensor, and then all our sensors are in place and we just need to wire a lot more. You know, who would have thought being the first to put Holly EFI on a Ferrari would have some complications, you know? I've I figured they sell bolt-in kits, right? Bolt-in, it's a V8, right? No, I totally knew this was gonna be a pain in the butt. So I've uh, saved you a lot of the trouble while I've spent most of the day just fidgeting everywhere, trying to figure out where to put it. And we now have the best solution, so we're gonna execute. So uh, we'll pick you up as uh, we make some progress.
we now have our hole in this cam gear and it has been properly tapped out to the quarter 20 that we will need for, there it is, our magnet bolt. Then the next step is getting the hole in the timing cover. And that's one where you can blindly guess and drill, or you can use a really cool technique. You can buy tools that will go into holes and have transfers, or you cut the head off a bolt and you sharpen the point and give a couple taps. And now I have the mark where we need to drill the hole. So we drill out that hole, size it for our cam sensor, and then we will uh, lock our bolt down. We will measure the proper depth and get the right air gap the best that we can. Then we're in the home stretch of wiring and running a Ferrari on Holly EFI is like in the super near future. I'm kind of excited, even though I have to drive the car with the shifter under my knee. It's, it's not fun to drive for six foot seven. Like it, it doesn't work. It was, it was made for the average Italian man in the seventies who was not six foot seven. We've got to update you on more progress and I'm actually really excited. This is all worked out and now we're down to just the, the simple things, you know, like finishing the install, but we have a cam sensor mounted. So let me show you in that last footage, you saw me drill some holes and working with a grinder and that's because I was repurposing what they call a T-nut, kind of the half moon nut from the adjuster to act as a backer in the Ferrari timing cover for the sensor to thread into. And that is exactly what we ended up with. We have our transfer. I wanted it to land right between these ribs so we didn't have to modify the cover too much. And we have the cam sensor installed. We've got our flying magnet in position. So what I actually wanna do is if we take this, we turn this all the way down till it basically bottoms out. Cause when you're setting this, you normally have to do it with feeler gauges and be very accurate. The problem is, well, I can't put a feeler gauge behind all of this. So I'm gonna show you how you can make that work. If you're ever in a position where you're putting fuel injection on Ferrari or one of your non-supported applications and you're having to get your air gap right, this is a way to get it pretty much where it needs to be. Here's how we're gonna make it work and it's, it's, it's math. So. If we come here, again, this was a big block Chevy mount kit, and they're telling you real nice and easy, just go in there with your feeler gauge, and we wanna have 040 to 080 of clearance. There's no way for me to do that. But what we do know is this thread pitch of the sensor is M12 by 1.0. And what that means is every revolution of this sensor is one millimeter. One millimeter is roughly 039, 13 and change inches. So to get 040 to 080 of what they're asking, we just need to back the sensor out one and a half turns. And that's going to move it 1.5 millimeters off of our magnet that we're gently bottomed against right now. And then we can lock it down. And we know we should have roughly 060 which is exactly in the middle of their air gap. So we know we can go in a little and out a little as we need. And then I'll set the, set the time lapse up again because it's a lot more wiring ahead of us. And then we'll fire this thing into life.
So I've got things kind of messy back here, but everything is more or less where it needs to land. We have our HPE CU. This is an aftermarket TAC driver. The Holly is able to produce the signal and modify the signals you need, but the tack of our Ferrari up there is designed to run directly off an ignition coil, so the EC level signals aren't strong enough, so you need amplifiers. We have our nice solid state relay that's going to live right there. Right now, that's only going to be controlling our fuel pump, and I went way over the top with a fancy four gauge feeding it. Um, that is also where our coils and fuel system gets its relay power coming off of there. We've got that all set up and everything's kind of in place. Our last two wires are just simple uh, check engine light and uh, cooling fan control, which we can do later because I'm at the point, I wanna get my laptop hooked up and we can start configuring and get ready to start. Inside here, this is still kind of a mess because it needs to find its final landing. We have fuel pressure sensor, I'm sorry, map sensor, fuel pressure sensor, our intake air temperature will live right here in the air box. I have our throttle actually opening closer to wide open. The way it was, the conversion, it, it would actually only stop, come on, in the hole. Well, anyway, there's throttle blades down there and it would only open about 70%. We can now get nearly fully 100%. The problem is it gets a little sticky here and the throttle cable itself is not quite doing everything it needs to. So we're gonna have to figure out and fix all of that. So something you should do if you are installing fuel injection before you power on, re, you know, go ahead and unplug what I'm going to do. I'm unplugging my ignition coils. I'm unplugging the fuel injectors and I'm going to unplug my O2 sensor because all of that needs to get configured in the software. If you leave your coils plugged in, they can actually burn up. Um, if the computer doesn't know what style of coils are there yet, they run risk of being damaged. So don't have them plugged in. Fuel injectors, just leave them unplugged so they don't have a chance of running. So that's what we're gonna do. We are going to put power to everything and start telling the computer how to run a Ferrari. So the very first thing that I need to do is go ahead and start to create the base calibration file, which is just a big process of slowly going through all of the options, telling it which sensors that I'm using, the displacement of the engine, we're going to let it know that we are using that NTK, not a Bosch sensor. And we're planning to use a direct 60 minus two crank wheel with a single pulse cam zeroing. We do that, we're gonna set the injectors that are as close that we can. Unfortunately, we don't have the exact calibration table, so we're gonna just work with what we've got. Worst case, I'll get a set of Holly so I know we have the exact data that we need. And once we have all of our sensors and rough stuff kind of put together, we're gonna to go through and set the correct firing order, which again, the Ferrari uses a unusual one. We're gonna configure our output, let it know which one is our warning for the check engine light and where to turn on the cooling fans. We still need to get those wired in. And then once that's all done, it's a matter of updating the firmware on our new ECU. And then we go ahead and upload our map work through a couple things and then get connected to the computer to see live data, do our TPS auto set, and then it's time to turn the trigger. All right, moment of truth. You can tell by the hair, it has been a long day, a lot of reading and rereading and double checking, but we have our map together. We're getting data, we're getting things ready. We have everything configured and a firing order set, which means one thing. It's, it's, it's time. Hopefully, hopefully it's, it's, it's time. Uh, if we notice in here, I've got some of the interior part two, cause we were having to check and configure some things, but we're going to reach through to this key. Key is on and oh, and uh, uh, oh, come on key. There. 